Matthew chapter 20, verses 29 to 34. Jesus heals two blind men. The number that we are going to be featuring is number 5185, blind. And we are going to now go into the nouns. And they are going to be highlighted in green. It begins in verse 29, K. Ek porevo me non afton apo eariho ekoluthison afto oklos polis. And of their going forth from Jericho, there followed to him a great multitude. So they're heading towards Jerusalem. Here's a map, and we can see uh, up here is Sea of Galilee. And Capernaum right on the side here, Nazareth over a little here. So they are heading down. The, and Jericho is way down here. So they came all the way down. And Jerusalem is over here where they are going to go to. So it says, though a great multitude followed to him. So it wasn't just the 12 disciples but a great multitude of people going down to hear what he had to say. So I'm sure the people in Judea and Jerusalem and down further south knew that this was happening. These people were coming. Many people believed that this man uh, was who he said he was as far as his doing miracles, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven at hand and the forgiveness of sins, things that nobody ever proclaimed that they were capable of doing in the history of Israel. These people in Jerusalem heard of him walking on water, healing the lepers, the blind, doing all these miracles, and then claiming he had the forgiveness of sins, he could forgive sins, and predicting his death and his resurrection. All these things they're starting to hear about. And with all these people following him, quite a sight. And now they're in Jericho. And it says in verse 30, Ke thu theo te flee, kathimani para tin odon. And behold, two blind men sitting down by the way. Now, later we see this Bartimaeus is mentioned in Mark when Jesus was leaving Jericho. So, Bartimaeus could have been one of these two here. But anyway, these two men were sitting there on the way, and Akusantes Oti Sus Paragi, having heard that Jesus is passing by, Ekrak son, they cried out, Legonta, saying, Eleison Imas Kyrie Eos David. They heard that he has been healing the blind and so forth. And so they have now called out. But in the Old Testament, what does it say about the blind people? In Exodus 4.11, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Who gave man a mouth? And who made the hard of hearing and mute, and the seeing and the blind? Was it not the Lord God? This, that's interesting that God allows people to be born blind and uh, deaf and mute. I believe he has a purpose for that. If you're a person who is blind and you're not seeing what if all these things are here, and you're questioning what is the purpose of God in my being blind, well, I don't know. I can't pretend that I'm God and I'm telling you what the purpose of God is in your particular life, but I know that God wants you to share his love for you and that uh, even though you are blind, you will be seeing more than a person that can see that is lost. So you're, if you understand Jesus and have Jesus in your life, then you're way better off than somebody that doesn't, that can see. And it says that uh, here as we go through it. In Leviticus 19.14, it says, You shall not wickedly see to a mute, 
and before the blind you shall not put an obstacle, and you shall fear the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 21.18, it says, Any man, whichever might be in him a blemish, shall not come forward. A blind man, or lame, or split mouth, or mutilated ears, as far as becoming a priest. That was God setting that up. But that is not the case in the New Testament with Jesus. A blind person is just as capable of doing and sharing the Lord as a person that can see. Deuteronomy 27.18 says, Accursed is the one misleading the blind in a way. In Job 29.15, I was the eye of the blind and the foot of the lame. God is the eye of you if you are blind or lame. Isaiah 29.18, it says, And in that day, deaf mutes shall hear the words of of the scroll, and the ones in darkness, and the ones in fog, the eyes of the blind will see. And he's talking, I believe, with Jesus and seeing the things that Jesus has for a person that is blind. In Isaiah 42, 16, it says, And I will lead the blind in the way which they knew not, and I will cause them to tread roads which they have not seen. I will make for them darkness to light and crooked into straight. So a person that is blind, I believe going to God, that God will give you a blessing that you would not receive without him. In the New Testament then, uh, the blind people that were healed by Jesus in Matthew 9.27, earlier there were two blind men along with these two blind men here. Matthew 12, 22, it says a demon possessed, the, a blind and mute was healed by God. Matthew 15, 30, great multitudes brought the blind, mutes, and cripples to Jesus to be healed. Matthew 21, 15, the blind in the temple came to Jesus. And Mark 8, 22, talks about the blind man of Bethsaida. And in Mark 10, 46, it says, The Son of David, Jesus, show mercy on me. And that was Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, as Jesus was going out of Jericho. It could be one of these two people that are here in Matthew. And then in John 9, verses 1 all the way to 41, a story of the man who was born blind from birth and healed at the pool of Bethesda, And the Pharisees came and questioned it, and his parents were called, and so forth. Really interesting chapter. And then it talks about the spiritually blind. Basically, the Pharisees calls them blind guides in Matthew 23, 16. And blind Pharisees, Matthew 23, 26. And it says in John 9, 40, And not we. Are we blind? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now you say that we see, therefore your sin remains. They didn't see that they were sinners. So he was crying out, we'll go now to our text, Show mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. And mercy... Uh, should be underlined with the red. We went through that in Matthew 15, verses 22 to 29. And he addresses him as Kyrie Eos David. Now the Lord, that's a big thing because this is the Greek scriptures. The people that read the Greek knew that Kyrie was also the Tetragrammaton, the four Hebrew letters that people call Yahweh, Jehovah, and all sorts of things. But in the Greek, it was translated Kyrios in the Greek Old Testament. So in the Greek New Testament, the people knew that Kyrios was God. And so he's calling out and using that word Kyrie in the vocative, O Lord. 
And then he calls him not only Lord, but son of David, who would have been the Messiah, Mashiach, that was promised to come. So these men are addressing Jesus correctly, where the Pharisees have all these doubts and try to trip him up. In verse 31, it continues, O they oklos, epitemison aftis. Now all these are nouns, uh, person, place, or thing. And sometimes, well, David should be highlighted because that's a name. Uh, oklos, a multitude. And then, uh, so Jericho is a place. Oklos, multitude. A way is a noun. Jesus is a noun. Kyrie is a noun. O Lord, Eos. All these are nouns. And the nouns we'll go through a little bit in the next uh, few sections and go more into detail and show you how they are uh, built. So in verse 31, it continues, O they oklos epitemison aftis in a copisosin. The multitude reproached them that they should keep silent. Now, they did the same thing with Bartimaeus, so Bartimaeus could have been one of these two people here. So they're telling him, ah, be quiet, you know, don't make a scene. Yeah, e they mizon, ekrazon, but they cry all the greater, they cried out, legontas, aesoni mas, curie, eos david, that show mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. So they're yelling it out now, and Jesus uh, knows their heart, and they're trying to get his attention. And what happens in verse 32? It says, Que stas, and standing, O Jesus, Ephonis, son of Tus. Jesus called them. Que ipe, and he said, Ti thelite, piso imid. What do you want I should do to you? Legusin afto, they say to him, Kyrie ina anik. That our eyes should be open. Well, you just don't, if you're blind, you just wouldn't walk up to somebody and say, Oh Lord, would you open my eyes? I don't think a blind person would ever do that. But here, these blind men have heard, and they're crying out, and they are doing that. They are saying that giving that man the, uh, their attention, uh, what's the word for it, the aura of their thought process, everything that's in them, that they see this person is able to do something that they could ask. Uh, you know, you don't walk down the street and you ask somebody to give me a million dollars, let me drive your car, or any of these things. You just don't do things like that because it it's like you're in, intruding on somebody, or they can't do it, or you're being um, overly ambitious and you're asking somebody all these different things. But no, not these two men. Oh, Lord, second time. Uh, open our eyes. And then, in verse 34, it says, Spelank nisthis, they, and then uh, moved with compassion, O Jesus, ipsato ton aphthalmon, aphthalmon. And Jesus touched their eyes. Uh, Splank, this 4697, we went through that earlier, with compassion. And that's in Matthew 14, verses 13 to 21. So Jesus touches their eyes. So there's two men, he's touching their eyes. K of Theos, Aneflipson, Afton, E Aphthalmi, and immediately their eyes gained sight, and they followed him, K Eko Luthison of To. Now, isn't that something? God Jesus has the power to touch somebody and they could see. They've been blind from birth, uh, or something happened, and God Jesus, God Jesus in the flesh was able to make 
them see. And we read these things and take it for granted. Yeah, Jesus walked on, did all these things, walked on water, healed the blind, raised the dead. But this was a big thing to these people in Israel at that time to have this person come with this kind of power. If he came today with this kind of power, it would still be an amazing thing that he was doing all these things. And people would either accept it or you would have people trying to prove that he's a charlatan like they did at that time. But we know he's not a charlatan. He has come into our lives. I might not have been blind, but I was certainly lost. And he finds the people that are lost, brings them on the right path. People that are in prison, gives them a freedom that they can know him, even if they're incarcerated. He heals people of diseases by using um, medicines, not always uh, somebody touching the person, although it can be that way. So many ways Jesus touches our lives. And Jesus can touch your life if you're listening to this and you haven't heard these things. And all you have to do is acknowledge him. Oh, Lord, son of David. That's who he is. It worked for these two men. It'll work for you. Our next section, now Jesus enters Jerusalem. Jerusalem. 